Hello and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will cover using the commands to mount and unmount disks and partitions. When you connect a device to a Linux computer, how do we access the data on that device? If you are using a regular Linux distro, your device will probably be automatically accessible and you will be presented with a way to access the data on that device. If you are working with a Kane forensics distro or any other forensics distro, the system is designed not to automatically mount any devices. This is a good thing because in a forensics distro, you don't want devices to be auto-mounted. In order to access the data, we will need to manually mount the device. Mounting is the act of attaching a file system found on a block device to the running system. It is analogous to assigning a drive letter in Windows. Without mounting, one cannot read logical files from a block device. Let's take a look at the syntax for the mount command by using the man page. So basically you specify mount, some options, and then you specify the device followed by the mount point. The device is going to be something that has a file system formatted. So most likely a partition like slash dev sdb1, or slash dev sdc2, etc. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the ls block command to see what devices are connected to our system. We're going to do ls block capital S. And in my case, I have four hard drives. I have SDA, SDB, SDC, and SDD. So I know that we're going to target SDD. So let's take a look at the partition table of that device using the disk type command. So with disk type, we can see that this is a 16 gig device. It has three partitions. The first partition is a FAT32. That's five gigs in size. The second partition is a NTFS, which is also five gigs. And the third partition is a ext4 that is also 5 gigs. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what we need next. The second thing we're going to need from that mount command is a mount point. And a mount point is a folder, any folder. On the Kane distro, there is a folder named slash mnt that is already created and can hold new mount points. Let's take a look at the MNT folder. And by default, there is nothing there. For the sake of sticking together in these videos, I recommend that you keep things simple and put all your mount points underneath the slash MNT folder. A mount point is a directory that will need to be created with the make dir command. So let's go ahead and create some make points. So I'm going to do sudo make dir of MNT USB slash mnt p1 for partition 1, p2, and p3. Since I have no imagination for creative names, those are what we're going to have. Let's take a look again at mnt. And there we see the three partitions, p1, p2, p3, and also the one called usb that we created. We are going to look at mnt usb. It's empty. mnt P1, it is empty. MNT P2, empty. P3, it is also empty. We could also could have done a recursive of MNT, would have shown us that uh, it's all empty. All right, let's take a look at the mount command. If you run the mount command by itself, it is going to show you everything that's mounted in the system currently. And this includes not just physical file systems like hard drives and thumb drives, but also virtual file systems that are resident only in memory of the running system. So all of this stuff that you see here, these are all basically part of the default system. There, none of these are looking at any particular drives per se, but they're all necessary for Linux to run. Any newly mounted devices will be at the bottom of this output. So that's what we're going to pay attention to when we run this command again. So let's go ahead and run our first command. We're going to do sudo mount 
slash dev sdd1. Right, so we're going to mount the first partition on that drive SDD, and we're going to use the mount point of MNTP1. And we need to do the sudo because this is a command that requires looking at the disk, which is a root level activity, so we can't do it without the sudo. So once you've hit enter, it gives you no feedback. So let's take a look at some feedback. Take a look at what's MNTP1 now. You can see that there are some files there now, whereas when we looked at it earlier, there were no files. Another way to check is if you can just run the mount command by itself again and look at the very bottom, right? Because that's the la like I said, it's the last couple of things that are getting mounted. It's going to tell you that hey, SDD1 is mounted on the mount point MNTP1. The file system that it saw was VFAT. It is mounting it read write and a whole bunch of other options. All right, so let's mount the second partition. So this time we're going to add the dash T. So this is one of the common options for mount is dash T for specifying the file system type. So if you remember in the first partition we did not specifically specify the dash T option so the mount command will make its best guess as to the file system that is on the target media. So you may or may not want this to be the behavior so I suggest as best practice you specify exactly what you want to have mounted which in this case is the NTFS partition. So once we do that we get no feedback so once again let's get our own feedback by doing an ls of mntp2 and sure enough now we see files where we didn't have any files before again the other thing we can do is type the mount command and this time if you take a look at it down here you can see sdd2 is mounted on mntp2 the type is fuse block which is um, basically ntfs because there is no ntfs driver it has to be emulated and once again, it is read-write is the uh, thing to note right here. Let's go ahead and mount the third partition. We're going to do SD3 to MNTP3. And this time, we're going to add a bunch of more options. So once again, we're going to specify explicitly the file system type to be ext4. When you specify dash O, it allows you to add a bunch of options. So one of the options we're going to add is RO for read only. Right? By default, it is going to be always read write if you don't specify it. Or you can explicitly specify read write. But for this example, we're going to re do read only. We're also going to add another um, one called no exec. So what happens here is that if we specify the no exec option any files that are from this mount point will not be executable so this would be good if you are working on a hacker case and your evidence could contain malware you don't want to accidentally execute the malware so by mounting it with the no exec the system will not allow you to execute anything from within that branch so let's go ahead and hit enter once again no feedback so let's get our own with the ls command. And we see that there are some uh, files already here, right? which again wasn't there before. So once again, we're going to do the mount command to look at what things look like. And here you see the sdd3 partition is mounted to mntp3 with the type of ext4, which we explicitly specified. And this time we see that it is read only and no exec. Next, we're going to look at unmounting. The command you mount will unmount a file system. Unmounting means you're removing the attached file system from your system. Typically, you will need to do this if you're going to physically detach that media. And one can unmount either the mount point or the device. 
So let's just detach it from the device end. So if we just do SDD1, right? So now that is detached. So remember we mounted it to MNTP1. So if we do a LS at MNTP1, we'll now see nothing, right? Because that file system has been detached from our operating system here. And to check that, you can also do the mount command. So notice from the bottom here, if you look at the last couple of things, SDD1 is no longer there. All right, so the other way of unmounting is you can do the U mount of the mount point. So let's do the mount point of MNTP2. Okay, so once again, we can verify by taking a look at MNTP2, which is now back to empty. Or we can do a mount. And then you can see that SDD2 is no longer there. So I want to point out one common problem of um, unmounting is sometimes when you do the U mount, you'll get a error that says the target is busy. There's usually a few common things that can fix this. One of the most common things is that you're actually CD'd into the mount point or any subfolder of the mount point, in which case we are, right? So you can see it says MNTP3. So the way to fix that is you just CD anywhere else outside of the mount point, and then you should be able to unmount. The other common reason for the target is busy is that you are using a file that is inside of the mount point. So for example, if you are in another window and you have VI open and VI is editing a file that's uh, somewhere in the mount point, then you will get this target is busy. So you'll basically go and you need to go and find where you are using these files and quit out of the VI or whatever programs. And then again, once again, if you're not in there, then you should be able to sudo umount p3. And once again, we're going to verify yeah, by doing ls. We can also verify by typing the mount command. And now you can see they're all gone. All right, the next thing I want to look at is two commands that help you look at the usage, the disk space usage and file space usage on your partitions. So before we look at those commands, I'm going to go back and remount those partitions. So, all right, so now we've rem remounted all three of those. You can verify that by typing the mount command again, and we can see that those are all mounted. So the first command we're going to look at is called DF, or disk free. What this is going to do is report the disk space usage on a particular file system. And one thing to note is that the file system must be mounted in order to have DF uh, work. DF has a couple of options. You have the dash lowercase h, which means human readable. So this is going to report all the sizes in human readable format. So it will say 1K and 23M and 4G and so forth. And the second one is the dash capital T, which will print the file system type. So that will kind of help you identify what file systems you are looking at. So the simplest way is just typing just that. And once you hit enter, this is going to give you all of the mount of file systems. So remember when we type mount, there's a ton of stuff that's on the system. So this is all going to show up. And once again, all this is part of the normal operating system uh, for Kane, so you might want to just get familiar with it and see what it is. And these are the three that we added. So you can see here for SDD1, it tells us that it's a VFAT uh, file system. Its size is 5 gigs. It's used about 977 megs. So it, it's available about 4.1 gigs or about using 20%. And here's the mount point. Same thing for the second partition. Um, we've used 1.6 gigs, so we have 3.5 gigs left, and so on and so forth. So this is a very useful command. Uh, one thing we can do is you can actually specify explicitly. If you just want to look at, let's say, P2, you can specify just P2, 
or actually you can specify multiple ones, and it'll just print out those specific ones. So the forensics application for this command would be if you need to do a logical copy of an entire partition, this will give you a pretty good idea of the amount of data you're looking at, right? So for example, here you know that this partition is only one gig, this one's 1 1.6 and two gigs and so forth. So that will help you get some reasonable idea of what your destination drive size needs to be and gives you some uh, possible time estimate of how long it will take to copy over. The second command that we want to look at is called du. It's called disk usage. So for the command, it's just du. And some of the common options is dash h for human readable again, because it's going to print out the file sizes in k's and m's and g's. C for a grand total. And so it will give you some kind of total at the very end of the entire listing. And then dash S for uh, giving you a summary for each one of the arguments. So let's take a look at what that means. So we can do that on the slash var folder. Particularly want to look at all of the files and folders in there. If we do that, it's going to come back permission denied. So let's try that again. And this time we're going to do a sudo. So you can tell that these are all the files and folders that are all under uh, slash var. It's going to produce a grand total. So this is what the dash C option gives you. And then this is what the dash S gives you as a summary for each one of the arguments that's in there. Otherwise, it's going to be a listing of each individual file. But once again, the forensics application for this command is that if you need to do a logical copy of certain files and folders, this gives you an estimate of the amount of data that you are looking at. You can plan on the size of the staging drive and also the time that it may take to copy those files over. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about the concept of mounting and unmounting file systems. When you mount, you're connecting a file system to a mount point. And a mount point is a directory within the running file system where a new file system can be attached. When you unmount with the umount command, you're disconnecting the file system from the mount point. We also learned about the disk free or DF command that can tell you the usage of each mounted file system. And the du command that gives us the estimate of disk usage for files and folders. Hope you enjoyed it. And if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.